Well, Jesse no, is trying to set up a mo- mobile podcast studio no, in, uh, in Morocco in a in a hostel, and yeah. he's he's sweating. His face is yeah. red. It's not going. The well. camera's shaking, and all I can hear is him. This is maddening. It's going really well. Oh, fuck it. He's fuck. Almost fuck. Done. No. Wonderful attitude. The fuck are we doing today? We're going to talk about a secret RCMP report that is worried that Canadians are going to revolt in five years. Okay. <laughs> you look like you're going to revolt now. Just fighting down, baby. For, for, for capita export value. Library. Chris, are you embarrassed by your behavior today? There's, there's a lot of bleeding hearts around. Do you have the fortitude or the gonads to stand up and come across here and say that to me, you son of a bitch? Just watch me. He certainly went too far, Mr. Speaker, when he st- I saw him stick his tongue out. Contemptuous disregard. More than a slab of bacon talking here. The disappointment you also feel is my responsibility. I lost my temper. What is the nature of your thoughts? The word was F-A-R-T. Hello, welcome to Canadian Politics is Boring. My name is Reese Waters, and with me is the international traveler you know as Jesse Harley, who just arrived in Morocco a few days ago. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a stint. It's been something. Let me tell you. Do you how, what's your opinion on Morocco compared to Spain and Italy? It's culture shock in two words. Culture shock. I did try sure. and prepare you. You did. Um, it's still a culture shock. Everyone, every single person is not just religious. They are really religious. And it's, it's very difficult to adjust to. It's very difficult to adjust to, you know? So they pray five times a day, which I learned is a very normal thing you grow up with. Yeah. Your, your your day is broken up into like segmented chunks. And then you stop and you pray for two minutes uh, on a mat while reading from the Quran. And it's so normalized that it's just like, you know, anything can become, can become normalized. And then uh, I'm, I'm here during Ramadan and I'm joining them with Ramadan, which is basically your fasting. You can't eat anything after sunset until, uh, no, after sunrise until sunset. Your videos, your videos on your social media, like amazing. Thank you. They are pretty cool. I think, um, uh, you also can't drink water, which has been the challenging part. I, I Jesse, you're not Muslim. You can drink water. No, I know. I'm joining them. I've decided to join them. I've met some people here, and they're very nice, and they've bought me dinner, and and uh, they've they've been very very kind to me, and uh, they wanted me to join them, so I did. Cool. So I'm just joining joining in Ramadan. Um, but yeah, not drinking all day, not drinking water all day is difficult. But uh, it's not that hard. It's not it's not as hard as I thought it would be. Um, but it's it's well, such think, a culture Jesse, shock. Here. Think about your skin. <laughs> <laughs> Years. Anyway, uh, I'm here in Morocco. I'm I'm going to be leaving. I'm in Tetuan, which is um, uh, noisy, busy, dirty, and I'm going to be leaving for a coastal city, which is goes by the name of uh, Tagazut, I believe. And learning learning Arabic has been incredibly difficult. Like I, it took me three days to barely remember how to say hello, thank you, and goodbye. Like assalamu alaikum is hello, <laughs> um, sokran is thank you, and then uh, bislama is goodbye. That took me days, <laughs> and I'm not very good at it. I guess it's just so, so fundamentally different from English that it's like it's been built in a whole new way, so or a different way. Yeah, so, yeah, makes total yeah. sense. That's cool. So it, it look it looks like you're you've met like lots of friendly people, and you're going to lots of cool like nighttime events and parties and. Only only think. one. There's a there's a cafe that uh, it was it was closed, and someone was like, "Hey, we should open it up just for Ramadan." In in that uh, they open in the evening, like throngs of people come in. They they eat one big meal while listening to music. Uh, there's poetry read in Arabic beforehand, and then after the meal, everybody leaves, and the cafe shuts down. This happens every night, just for when people break their fast during Ramadan. That's pretty and cool. They're, make, they're making a killing. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, so it's I, a- I was thinking about you said like they pray five times a day, and that's structured into life. Canadians get some kind of drive-through coffee five times a day. So it's very similar. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, it yeah. Is. And when we go through, we we thank our Lord and Savior Tim Horton and for- Justin. 
and just <laughs> and just praise be Justin, <laughs> praise be Justin, praise be <laughs> the baby eater. I wanted to talk to you something really, really funny. I, I got to skip to sharing any personal stories to tell okay. you about this. It was so Pierre Trudeau. Oh, you, that just means Pierre you don't Trudeau. have anything fun. It just means you don't have everything fun going on. In your oh, life. I do, but I wanted to use the space to talk about this. So remember, we did the 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 the, the story with JJ Whitehead about the litter trays in schools and the bullshit <laughs> story. Yes. So so CBC did a uh, Pierre Polly was in Halifax talking about um when? just when doing doing one of his, doing was he doing his, a, was he doing a lunch a breakfast could no, I, have I, don't know, I don't know you should have <laughs> um, but anyway so what happened was they they interviewed a bunch of Pierre Polyev supporters and there were people saying like uh for me it's everyday expenses heating my home the groceries that I buy I drive a car to work every day it all adds up but this one woman called Janice now just so you know I read this newspaper article closer to when it came out, and they've since amended it, so it doesn't say what it used to. But I, I pretty oh. much like copy and pasted the text when I saw it because it was just too good. So okay. This woman Janice was basically said she supports B.A. Polyev because around gender discussions in schools and the cost of housing. But she says the poor young people they haven't got any hope, and basically then goes on to explain that her daughter's art teacher um, identifies as a bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why she's supporting Pierre Polyev. <laughs> she's supporting Pierre Polyev because her daughter's teacher identifies Art as a bumblebee. teacher identifies as a bumblebee. <laughs> it's madness, she tells you. Madness. But, the, but I went back to the original article. I heard I heard someone once say that they identify as being correct in this argument. And yeah. like, whatever, they, whatever their argument was, I was like, I Identify as being great. unwilling to listen to what you have to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but uh, on March the 17th at 9.50 p.m. Atlantic time, uh, the, the CBC updated the article because they have to put an amendment on the bottom. Um, and it says a previous version of the story also included part of a quote CBC could not corroborate. So they obviously tried to do the due diligence and find the art teacher. They're trying to, they're trying to find art teachers and yeah, ask, yeah. ask them if she they said identify her art as a bumblebee. A bumblebee. Let's see if we can find an art teacher that identifies. Like, come on, because that would be a second story right there. That would right? be. <laughs> be art amazing. teacher identifies as bumblebee. Anybody here <laughs> knows that art teacher please, and, uh, and can get in touch with us, please do so. We'd love to have them on the show. Never, exactly. I've never, never interviewed a bumblebee before. <sighs> oh, but that was so good. That made me so happy when I read that. I, every That's time great. every time I see it, it's, it's amazing how often it still pops up where people say, I, so-and-so's told me that somebody identifies as a something. I just, <laughs> it just entertains me so much. And that's now. why I'm voting for Pierre Polyev, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. that's why, yeah, I, yeah. that's why the future, that's why I'm the future leader of this country, Pierre Polyev, is going to get my vote. Uh, probably mm-hmm. the leader. I assume he's yeah. going to win. I assume he's going to win too. He's not getting my vote. Fuck that. He's, he's insane. He's out of his fucking gourd. <laughs> You're joking when you say he's getting your vote, right? Like, you're not. I didn't say I was going to vote for him. I can't vote. You you literally just, oh, that's right. You can't vote. (laughs) Well, that's our show. That's our time. Thanks for listening, Jay. God, no. I I, I think it'd be physically impossible for me to vote. I think my subconscious would just make my body freeze with a pencil (laughs) in my hand. (sighs) Even if someone, like, paid me to do it. I just don't think I could. Anyway. He's going to be prime minister anyway. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's the way it goes. We can see it coming a mile away. We can call you him know? names. We can say horrible things. We can make, has there ever up. been, we can make me things ask up you. about him. We also vote for him. Has there, I don't know the answer to this. Has there ever been like, let me think. No, nope, never mind. Uh, I'm, I just realized how my question doesn't apply. So let's continue. That's it was, it was <laughs> a, a good question. question. I, answer, I answered my own question in my head before I asked it. Yeah. So <laughs> just for the record, though, as well, I probably wouldn't vote for Justin Trudeau either. I couldn't vote for. I don't like either of them really. Yeah, I get you. I don't know much about what Justin's been doing, but I just I don't just, know. I don't know. Not enough. I'm, That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> so, although, uh, to be honest, though the. Actually, I'm not going to talk about that now. We'll do that another day. Okay. But, All right. Um, I was going to talk to you. Ah, fuck it. Let's do it. Um, so Justin Trudeau, they, apparently there's rumors they're going to finally do the um, voter reform that he promised to do in 2015. That's funny. Because if That's he did, funny. it'd be impossible for PA to get a majority. So now that he knows he's definitely going to uh... lose... He might as well it's go out with a bang. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like you know in action movies when they're like the, the the hero can't beat up the villain at the end, and he's like, "You can't win, hero," and the villain, and he goes to the villain, "I don't right. have to win, but we can both lose." 
That's what he's doing essentially. And then he just I love it though. And then he just pulls a grenade and shoves her in his mouth and kisses him and they blow up. <laughs> that's what Pete, that's what if the Justin does do that, it'd be great. I'd love it. I hope he does. I hope he does. Because we we need the grenade that. French kiss yeah. with Pierre Bolyev. Yeah. <laughs> we no, we've needed the, the partisan past the pull blah, 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 whatever for like a long time now. But if he finally yeah. does it because he knows he's got no chance of winning, at least that's like a parting shot. I think he'll go down as a hero then. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the final that. redemptive act of Justin Trudeau. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> I so, hope so. Anyway, the brightest subject, let's talk about the secret report from the RCMP that Canadians are going to turn on their government and each other. All right, I'm excited. Oh, look at that. That's that's why I sent Okay, I have to point it towards me. There we go. There we go. Did you, just, I, I I sent, you, just, you did something to your microphone that made it sound better. Way but I pointed it I pointed it the way it was supposed to be pointed at my face. <laughs> Because I'm holding it. Normally it's being held, and I can point it, and it just doesn't move. But I'm holding it like a fucking ice cream cone. So, <laughs> so, um, so this this report, this a secret RCMP report, is warning the federal government that Canada may descend into civil unrest once citizens realize the hopelessness of their economic situation. Um, apparently, I mean, sorry. Okay. Uh, the report. Yeah, the report is called "Whole of Government Five Year Trends for Canada," which doesn't sound like a nest. It sounds like a pretty boring document. The coming <laughs> period of recession will accelerate the decline in living standards that younger generations have already witnessed compared to earlier generations. For example, many Canadians under thirty-five are unlikely to ever be able to buy a place to live. Um, the report was labeled secret and is intended as a piece of special operational information to be distributed with it distributed within the RCMP and among decision makers in the federal government. Sounds so boring, man. I'm like falling asleep. Just spice it up here. Come on, let's go. What? <laughs> I, I love that all it takes is for the, the National Canadian Police Force to <laughs> warn the government that everyone is so pissed off and things are about to get so shit that they need to get ready for people smashing windows and trying to burn the buildings down. Do you, do you think this is going to happen? Well, I, d- I don't know. I mean, why why wouldn't it happen? Why it might happen it's just Canada, as much. Canada, man. Canada doesn't do this. this I mean, you say that. Do. You say that, but I it's do. possible anyway. Has it happened before? Yes, so many times. In Canada? Yes, it happens when like they lose the Stanley Cup. <laughs> People destroy like downtown areas because they lose the Stanley Cup. You don't think it can happen because people feel desperate in their living situation? No, specifically because of economic situations. The Stanley Cup is different, man. Canadians have, you know, we have limits. that's different. That's okay. <laughs> we lose our Stanley Cup, we lose our fucking minds. Okay. <laughs> it's like downtown Toronto, uh, downtown Montreal, and downtown Vancouver have been destroyed thanks to Stanley Cup. Yeah, that's totally different than an economic crisis. Come on now. No, this yeah, that's way worse. Than, way, way worse than man. desperate a desperate financial situation of being unable to live or afford housing. It's terrible. I was talking with a I was talking with a Moroccan friend here, um, uh, <clears throat> Yassir, and about the cost of living in Morocco versus Canada and like groceries and um, and a, another friend, another Moroccan friend who is actually living in uh, Holland, uh, Norden. And he was saying he's having just as difficult time in Holland with groceries and cost of living as we are in Canada. And we were both kind of explaining to Yassir about uh, like how crazy prices are for buying groceries. Like a small bag of groceries will run us like $130 Canadian easily, right? And that'll last us maybe a week, maybe two, if we like are really careful with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just mind blown. Like he can, for like 100 100 euros uh, every two weeks, he can feed easily – like healthily and happily feed a family of five, right? <clears throat> Every two weeks. So it's just, it's like, yeah. Anyway. Well, I, I, but I think that's the thing though, is that housing, people can't afford, it's harder for people to afford high quality housing. It's more expensive. Like, do you see this guy? Do you see this guy on Instagram in Halifax? He's a real estate uh, influencer, I guess. A real he, estate he, influencer. Yeah, well, I guess he, he's like, I don't know if you call him an influencer. He's on Instagram and TikTok and he'll go and he'll give tours in Halifax of like $2 million condos, right? And like, 
and how amazing they are. And the comments are just filled with people like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, <laughs> but, but the, this is it. This is it though. Like, honestly, I think the, the fact that like life is hard, like I think unless you're like very comfortable, everyone is changing their habits to adapt to the high cost of everything. If that continues to get worse over the next five years in terms of like, fuel, are they saying it is? Well, yeah, that's, that's what the report is saying is that living standards are going to continue to plummet. So, so this, so this, this report was heavily redacted. So they'd actually like someone had gone through with a big pen and and got rid of loads of stuff. It was it was filed by Matt Malone, an assistant professor of law at British Columbia's Thompson Rivers University, who was an expert in government secrecy, and it's kind of a, a considered a scanning exercise just to look for threats. Like, what are the threats that Canada's going to face? Um, and they assume that Canada's current current situation is going to deteriorate in the next five years. So it's oh, living, yeah. living standards, increasingly unpredictable weather, seasonal catastrophes such as wildfires and flooding, and also increased wildfires and flooding. Where, yes, where does that come from? Well, wildfires and flooding happen way more often than they used to. Sorry, I. I thought there was a direct correlation between wildfires and, and flooding and the economic crisis. Like, like, I'm, like I thought what you were saying. I'm like, what? <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> That's so funny. That's, you know, um, no, it, like, well, like the idea is that you've got a climate crisis, an economic crisis, um, an information crisis, and misinformation crisis, a disinformation crisis, all <laughs> these things, and a li- standard living crisis. All these things are coming together in a way that is hard to comprehend or prepare for. So. So. So what are we going to do? I'm going to, my plan is, I'm going to buy a Harley Davidson for me, my wife and my kids. um, But I'm going to make it like look rusty and put spikes on it. Maybe a few skulls or severed heads on a spike on the back of my seat. Smart. I'm going to get some football like armor um, and like, you know, kind of scribble like bad words and pictures of skulls on it. <laughs> shave, shave a mohawk um, by get some get some white um, spray paint and spray your face and your teeth. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Chrome, chrome, chrome spray, chrome spray paint yeah. for my teeth. Um, yeah. And and then just like a machete, but um, I'm going to make it very pointy and rusty just to be mean. Uh, several guns and maybe a bow and arrow in case I run out of bullets. Um, and if you get you come across any any uh, hitchhikers, you have to uh, chain them up to the front of your your motorcycle. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's my yeah. plan. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna put this stuff away in the shed for now, and then when Smart. it does happen, we'll just ride through the neighborhood and be kings. If I could afford it, uh, with enough saving in ten to fifteen years, maybe I'll buy a van and live in it. Yeah. I think it's so funny that like I look forward to van, circ- circling you in your van as you cry and then setting fire to you. It's it's a funny joke somebody else made. It was on yeah, and setting fire to me. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I put out the fire, but we're we're gonna have a drought. So I, uh, I someone made a joke about how like you know back in the nineties, eighties, and nineties, living in a van was like the the pinnacle of being poor, and now it's like a like, dream. It's a dream to live in a van. Oh when, my god! You mean I don't have to pay rent? What? <laughs> when I moved to Canada, we sold so much furniture and everything, and what we had left was in a shipping container. And we'd sold the house. We had no bills. We had no mortgage. We had nothing. We were in an Airbnb for six weeks, and I was like, me and my wife were both the same. We was like, imagine if instead of buying a house, we bought an RV and we just traveled across Canada. Until until we run out of things to do, or we run out of money, or whatever, you guys would have killed each other. It would have been amazing, <laughs> but at the same time, and then now, like you know, six years into a mortgage, I'm like, you still kind of get nostalgic for that, <laughs> living in a van. We could have been road family. Imagine being a road family. Does she? Does she still want to? Oh God, I, I think we both do it in a heartbeat. You should do it. I know, but kids need to go to school, don't they? I mean, you could homeschool them. Home RV school them. Could I, my <laughs> children were RV schooled. I did it myself. <laughs> Teach them how to be road warriors. I know, but they yeah. got their own lives now. They're like little people with their own little lives. I can't. Do That's the trouble with uh, with little kids. 
Well, they have yeah. their own lives. Yeah. <laughs> it is, I know. You don't own them. That's the problem. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, the other thing the report says is they're worried about people being increasingly disillusioned with their government uh, and talking about misinformation, conspiracy theories, and paranoia. Law enforcement should expect continuing social and political polarization fueled by misinformation campaigns and an increased mistrust for all democratic institutions. Of course. Um, As one comedian said, and I love this. I think it's so funny when when people are saying like um, that the government doesn't lie to you. He's like, "Are you kidding me? I've got three kids. I lie to them all the time, constantly. You don't think your government of several dozen like million people doesn't lie to you, like <laughs> really to keep you under control and keep you calm and safe and just have everything? You really believe that? Okay. Well, I I, I genuinely I I there's the whole idea that the CIA encouraged encouraged conspiracy theories about ufos and everything because if everybody thinks that you've got top secret ufo technology yeah. then you're clearly like a superpower with an edge on every other country in the world if they think that you're flying around in et's corvette like <laughs> then like it helps but also the idea that the government these conspiracies that the government is all powerful and watching you it's not true most governments are just like you know the, the the amount of control. Mr. China. Oh yeah, they've 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 taken. It's it not to say, so there's there's just a good example of saying like it's not like it couldn't happen. But <laughs> you know, but at the same time, is really helpful to a government for people to actually think that they have so much control and influence over your life to the minute detail, because the the truth is that everyone is winging it and no one knows what the fuck they're doing. Even your, in, even in China, slogan. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> gonna, nobody knows what the fuck they're doing but somehow we've been alive for a few hundred thousand years as humans so. right but Amazingly. anyway should go. But, so is that uh yeah is there is there a conclusion is there an ending to this sad story well, no it's interesting <laughs> i i think that like i think that what it's saying is is that things uh, in terms of productivity is on the way down, ex everything's more expensive, economic five forecasts for the next five years are bleak, um, and saying the rest of the decade could be uh, what, the, what uh, uh, is being described as by the French president Emmanuel Macron as the end of abundance, which is kind of a correction in our standard of living where wastefulness mm. and abundance is no longer. It's kind of almost like what happened 100 years ago with the Great Depression, I guess. It's kind of mm. similar time zone, similar period. Interesting. Which well, might maybe lead to another world war. Who knows? Who hope? We can hope. <laughs> Yay! Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> I don't know, Jesse. But anyway, I thought that report was interesting because it just shows how cynical and afraid the people in charge are. But that makes you go, well, if they've written this report, what what are they going to now do to prepare for it? And I think build more bunkers, Nothing. tanks, oh, bunkers, water yeah. cannons. Um, better armor, better weapon, bigger sticks for hitting people with that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, bats with nails in them. Because if they're saying if they're saying this is what's going to happen, then they've got to prepare for it. So they go, okay, well, we just need to be able to smash people up with signs more often. I'm racking my brain as to what we could do for a, 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 an improvised heritage minute for this one. I don't think there is one, unless we, unless we want to do like Pierre Polyev as Mad Max, like <laughs> after the. <laughs> What's the main bad guy called? What's the main dude called? The Oh, I forget. What is his name? Mad guy. <laughs> Mad, Mad, Mad Max. Immortan Joe. Immortal right. Joe. The Not man. immortal. Immor Immortan with an N. Immortan, Immortan Joe. Immortan Pierre. <laughs> Immortan Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do like a quick 30 second just a, a desert wasteland with yeah, with yeah, uh, Pierre okay. Polyev or Morton Polyev uh sitting on like a, a, a throne of skulls like well <laughs> well tanks okay. full of oil surround him I got okay, so I got an like, idea I got an idea can, it starts in the Canadian desert wasteland okay so <laughs> the year is 2027 <laughs> Tumbleweed blows across the flat landscape of Manitoba, this once beautiful paradise. 
resorted to uh, like a giant dust bowl, much like the 1920s, except this one's in Manitoba. They might have already had one anyway. Justin Trudeau is running. He's got some kind of steel contraption on his face and he's dragging a chain. They're after him. The people on bikes with spears that have grenades on the end are after him. He's managed to escape the Immortan Pierre. He falls to the ground, trips over, and they throw a net over him and drag him back to the lair, also known as Parliament Hill. Locking him in. That's a hell of a trek. (laughs) Tying him. Tying him. Well, it's, you know, it's it's flat. Uh, (laughs) Tying him to the front of a. 2010 Dodge Charger that is rusty. Um, instead of headlights, uh, there's the heads of the screaming dead people with light bulbs in their mouths for dramatic effect. <laughs> they drive him back to Parliament Hill. As he arrives to Parliament Hill, Pierre has done a bit of a remodel. Um, he's built a wall of cars, burnt out cars. Um, and everyone is there praying that Pierre will come out and give them some water, some fresh water. Um, Sometimes he lets water out. Sometimes he's bubbly. Sometimes it's just gallons of double double. Either way, the, the desperate Canadians below will take whatever PA gives them these days. <laughs> I'm do- is, I don't know where to go. Hang on a minute. I got an idea. PA finishes finishes gulping down a big old pint of breast milk. <laughs> Wipes his mouth. Says, "Bring Justin to me." Puts on his transparent armor. And his scary face mask, just to have a little bit more presence. <laughs> Waves goodbye to his four wives, and then um, in the concubine chamber, and <laughs> I don't know. I don't go with this. <laughs> Keep going. This is great. Don't stop now. Jesus, you're on a roll. <laughs> bring, bring me Justin, but rip, rip all of his clothes off, apart from a small loincloth made from an oily rag from the Canadian flag. From the Canadian flag. Uh, Pierre says, Justin, look what you did to this country. All of this is nothing to do with me. I didn't do this. Even though I was in power before you as a, as a health, as a housing minister or something. Nothing to do with me. Stephen, this was in Harper. This was you. This was all you, Justin. Look at, look at the Manitoba, Ottawa, former paradises. It's like, we, it's like the Jetsons. We were living in the future. And, and now we're like monsters we're fighting over scraps in a dusty puddle. What have you got to say about yourself, Justin? He can't talk. He's too dehydrated. He just screams, just screams one word. Daddy! <laughs> that's it i'm done now although pierre polly of chugging down a pint of brass milk is quite a nice image <laughs> please make some ai art for that <laughs> let's put it on a t-shirt <laughs> that'd be pretty good <laughs> pierre polly Pierre polly of pouring breast milk over himself in a wet t-shirt concert test <laughs> uh, <laughs> well never it's how he got concert. so strong it's how he got all these muscles <laughs> Did you see it's how he got all those nipples? Muscles. Oh, okay, I heard like nipples. He okay. the nipples but it gave... <laughs> Muscular nipples. <laughs> Nothing gives you muscles like a conservative woman's breast milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
Oh, uh, okay. That was really good. I like that. <laughs> that was awesome. I, I don't know where I was going. I was kind of just drinking green tea and hoping it'd give me some energy, but yeah. Uh, All right, um, I have to go uh, break the fast for uh, Ramadan today. I never thought uh, you'd say that on this podcast. I never did I. Neither did I. <laughs> yes, he won't say that was on the board. It's very I'm going it's to very break sugary, my fast like, for Ramadan. I have to ask for a, a Islam is name. sugary. It, the, no, the, the fast that oh. I'm being broken with. Like, I just go to a cafe and they, it's not a cafe, it's a restaurant slash cafe. It's a huge, I thought you, massive. I thought you were describing a, a major world religion as a flavor then. <laughs> no, but like, they just, and everyone, you have to break your fast with three dates and a glass of milk. It's, that's just how it's, it's done traditionally. And then three dates like, and a glass of milk. Yep. Let's go. Cool. And, and then there's three different types of pancakes and like one's a cornmeal bread and one's a pancake, one's more of a crepe and you put like jam on it and honey on it and you maple eat syrup, like these pastries. I wish God, you know, and then there's these smoothies an avocado smoothie and a fruit smoothie. And I'm like, it's just, it's so much sugar and bread, which turns into sugar. And it's just, you're, 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 and then the, you finish it with coffee with sugar. And I'm like, my God, Ooh, it's so, I need, I need, nutrients <laughs> i need something other than bread and honey so, every day <laughs> i mean you were just street drinking most of the time in europe and now you've switched to just high intensity midnight sugar consumption that's it like you fast all day and all evening and then you eat a pound of bread and sugar and then you do it again the next day i can't keep this up i need to ask for a bowl of meat and i think they i know they've got them they're called tagine, uh, to tagines um, just a bowl of meat, basically. <laughs> it sounds like it's lamb, isn't it? Lamb to cheese. You can get different types. You can get lamb and, and chicken and I like lamb to cheese. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, what, what is it next week? Are you going to next week? Jesse's going to try. Uh, Bud- uh, Jesse's going to try Buddhism next week. <laughs> See how that goes. I'm going to uh, that surf community, and um, I'm just going to hang out by the beach, and maybe do some yoga, and maybe do some some not surfing, but bodyboarding. You maybe. sound you sound like an annoying rich kid on a gap year. I know, right? I'm running going, out of money I'm so going, quickly. Going to the surf like, community in, on that beach in Morocco, just to hang out, I, do some yoga. I have like no money. It's and I have all the money. It's weird. It's should I talk about that on the podcast? It's so strange. Go on, if you've got time, because it's fascinating yeah, what's happened to you. It's fucking fascinating. I am running out of cash very quickly, and my income is has disappeared. Like, it's just from the work that I was doing. They just didn't need, I guess, me this this season. So, like, I didn't get work as a contract editor. That's just one of the, the, the you know, the, the, the risks you take is sometimes they don't need you sometimes, you know. They use so AI, gonna, AI. They've replaced you with AI. Yeah, maybe. I didn't get any work this winter, so I'm like, fuck. So it's just all my savings are, are dwindling to nothing. Meanwhile, I look into my bank account, and suddenly there's, what was it? It was like, I think it was $57,000 was deposited into my account. I'm like, I didn't put that there. What the fuck? And I I was like, weirdly nervous, right? Because like, I say weirdly because it's money in my account suddenly, like a lot of money in my account. I'm like, but it was nervous because, like, you know, I don't know. I feel like it, it's just like anything. You know what I mean? I don't know. It was hard to describe why I was nervous, but it's just like something was royal. Well, it, it, could, it could be a gangster or something, and like right. So I don't know. <laughs> so I looked it up online, and everyone, everyone was like, "Don't fucking touch it. Whatever you do, it does do sound like the it. start of a Tarantino film." Right, you'll you'll get in trouble. There's like law behind this. Like you can get fined. You can get blah 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 blah. blah. I'm like fuck. Okay, so I call the bank after an hour on hold with the bank. They finally decide this is worthy of an investigation. I'm like fucking hell. Thank you. And then like a week goes by, I don't hear a word from them. And then another ninety six thousand dollars was deposited into my account on top of the original fifty seven. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? And I can't touch this shit. I'm going broke because I don't have an income, and I have a hundred and fifty some thousand dollars just sitting in my account that I'm not allowed to touch. I can look at it, but I cannot touch it. Uh, so that's that's just the weirdness that's happening with me. <laughs> have you seen the the movie um, Dumb and Dumber? Yeah, of course. They have the, the briefcase <laughs> of money. I love Dumb and Dumber. They have the briefcase of money and they spend it all. They just fill the briefcase with IOUs. IOUs. <laughs> just do that. It's fine. Yeah, I think this is be better than money. They're IOUs. <laughs> <laughs> go 
cool. Well, I, I'll let you go and break your fast and have a great time in Morocco. Um, Thanks. Uh, cool. And, and then you can go to your Sweet. Swift community. Okay. I hope it's got Wi Fi. Can we do more episodes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm really bored. <laughs> probably. Probably does. <laughs> oh, bye, everyone. Go to CanadianPoliticsIsBoring.com for live show tickets or Patreon. Um, and we'll see, see you soon. Oh, yeah, our tickets are, are selling out. You should get a ticket now while you can. Selling uh, like hot for, cakes or um, selling like, selling like cakes. room May. temperature cakes. So what's the date again? May something? May the something. Yeah. something May the PM. something. May the something that some, sometime PM in Halifax, 26, Nova Scotia. 26th, I think, Halifax, Nova Scotia this year. You'll have a great time. It'll be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. It'll be Je- fun. It'll be Jesse fun. has promised to shave his head and then draw hair on his head with a Sharpie. And Reese has uh, promised to shave his pubes and use those pubes to glue on a handlebar mustache on his face, <laughs> which he will twirl during the show <laughs> like an evil villain. Gee, that's going to be a big mustache. <laughs> <laughs> it's a variable forest down there. Yeah? <laughs> okay, bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>